Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make these little bolts. You can get the template on my website. Let me see if I can get the focus here for you. Alright, and then we're also going to learn how to make the cone threads from the sewing room. And some little miniature fabric swatches. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to go on my website and you need to download the printable sewing room stuff. Okay, and when you get it, it's going to have lots and lots of little tabs in it that you're going to be able to use. This sheet here is if you want to do buttons. And then here you have a whole bunch of printable patterns and then make your own patterns okay and then there's even a ruler on there all right so once you have that then you have a couple of options with your fabric all right so the first thing I did was I took a paint stick and um, or not a paint stick, I'm sorry, a popsicle stick, like a tongue su suppressor size. And I cut it down a little bit, and then I made two of them adhere together with some clamps and some glue. All right. If you don't have those, you can cut one of these down, which is a larger craft stick, and then just cut it to size. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. So you can use your three-in-one multi-cut tool and you can cut it. Or if you don't have that, you can use a pair of crafting scissors, which most of you probably have. It's going to splinter, though, I'll tell you that. Um, if you don't have um, good scissors, it's like titanium scissors, then you can cut it with your little hacksaw or any one of the tools that you do have that saws wood. Of course, I'm knocking things over. Let's see, you have a couple different saw options up here. And they sell all of these at Harbor Freight or Home Depot or Lowe's. You know, the, any of those would cut this. Now, when you're going against the grain, it will actually splinter like this when you're trying to cut it. But the funny thing is, is when you're going with the grain, it doesn't do that because you literally are going right up there. And of course I need to make mine a little bit skinnier. It doesn't have to be perfect because remember it's going to be covered by fabric. Okay, so you want to have two of those and you want to glue them together. The other option you have is to cut a paint stir and stick down to the thickness of um, two of these, which isn't quite an eighth, but it's almost an eighth. All right, so once you have this done, you can do that or you can glue four popsicle sticks together. You would glue two on top and then two on bottom side by side. And then that would give you almost the same thickness. Once you have the popsicle sticks glued together, you glue them in between and you glue them front to back so that it makes a quad of four. Clamp it and let it dry. Okay, so while that's drying, you want to go ahead and cut out your strips of labels. Okay, I'm cutting them out lengthwise because it works out a lot better when you're doing the gluing. Remember, don't use your fabric scissors for paper or wood or anything like that because it'll ruin it. And 
All right. While that's drying, I want you to get a quarter inch um, wooden dowel round. And then you want to take a pencil sharpener and you want to turn the end. Now I'm turning this rather than turning the wood because you don't want the wood to move. You just want to lightly turn it. Because see, here's the thing. When you turn the wood, this will chip off really easily. And you don't want that to happen. All right. Now, once you have that, you want to go ahead and come right to the edge of that and then cut it off. You can either use one of your little hand saws or you can go around in a little circle and you can cut off with your 3-in-1 multi-cut tool. Which I use this tool a lot. All right, now I'm going to take some sandpaper and sand that edge. Now, if you want to make sure that it's flat, do it on a flat surface and just rub it back and forth and make sure your cone is standing straight up. Okay, now don't worry about those points and I know they're two different sizes, but that's okay. You can measure it and make sure that they're the right size like I did when I did the one up there. All right, now you need to get yourself some embroidery floss or some string, like some sewing thread. Embroidery thought, um, floss is a little bit thicker, so you use less. Put a little bit of glue on there. And then you wanna wrap the floss around this. Now you can do this while it's still on the stick and then cut it off afterwards. And then you don't have to worry about holding this little tip. It's completely up to you. But you just keep spinning it all the way. All right, when you get to the top, what I do is I make sure I have my glue upside down in my bucket or my cup. And then I just dip the lid into it. And then all of that excess glue, you'll be wiping off with your finger. But your cone will go all the way up. Now, if you want it to be flat, you can cut that top off, like I said, or you can leave it. Now, just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere, I put a little bit of glue on the outside of that, and I'm just kind of rubbing it around the circle. And then there you have your embroidery cone. Now, if you don't want it to have that top, you can sand it off or cut it off before you get to that point. And if you want it to be flatter at the top, you can sand it down. And you'll see the difference. I'll do one more for you. And we'll do this one in blue just because we'll have two different ones. Again, you're just gonna wrap it around there. And if you let the embroidery floss unravel a little bit, it looks more like thread than it does the embroidery floss.
Okay, now before you get to that edge, if you don't want to see just thread and you want to see some cone at the top, remember you got to cut that off. Put a little bit of glue to adhere it. And then now you got a top. So without a top, with a top. I kind of like it personally with the top showing through flat because it looks more like a thing of thread to me. Now I've already made one with this. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and use this material. I mean, the popsicle stick so you can see the difference. I'm going to put a little tacky glue at the top. A little down the side just a little bit because we're going to spread that out okay so what we need is for our fabric tag to get good and moist you want that to be nice and wet so that it gets bendy. All right, and once it's bendy, then you want to kind of push it down just a little bit. Cut those edges off and bend them down with that glue. Remember, you want it nice and wet because when paper gets wet, it gets really moldable. Now, if you don't have the access to wood, you can always double stack the um, cardstock poster board or even foam board. Foam board might make a really thick bolt, but you could do that if you had to. And repeat that process at the next end. Try to center that label the best that you can in between the two boards. And this is why I said it didn't matter if your cut was perfect because you're going to be covering it. Okay, so now you should have a piece that looks like this. And the next step is to cut yourself a piece of fabric and make it just a tiny bit longer, just a little bit longer. Take that piece of fabric and you wanna make a little hem at the top with some glue. just by folding that little itty bit over. I mean, you're just folding it over in the smallest amount. You don't wanna have bulkage. Okay, it should be enough for two sides. Which right here needs to come down just a little bit more. Now, once you have that, go ahead and put yourself some, helps so I take the lid off, some tacky glue on one side. 
of your bolt. And I'm going to start at the top with it being at the top and then having it in the middle at the top. Or close to the middle. All right, that bottom, you want to make sure it's even. And now you want to wrap that. Put a little bit of glue right along there. Now you want to use the Aileen's glue or a tacky glue of some sort for this because it doesn't bleed through or get bulky looking. Okay, now that you've done that, now you want to take this side and you want to glue it down into a triangle. Now it should look like this. Wrap it around it. And then glue it in place. Now, rather than wrap that little piece around right there, I'm just going to cut that little end off. Trim up the bottom of my fabric. And then so that I don't get frays, I'm going to go over top of it with a little bit of glue. And that will dry clear. And there is your fabric bolt. Now, if you want to do multiple layers of your fabric bolt, you would just have to fold over the seam at the top more. Then you could just repeat the process multiple times, you know, and wrap it around two, three times, whatever. But you don't really need to because you still get the appearance that it's a fabric bolt, especially when you stick it inside of your sewing shop. All right, now you have all these little scraps left over. Why waste them? Just make a mini little fabric. All right, so for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that leftover material. Oh, the camera's falling. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, all right, so just cut the leftover fabric. a strip now this strip can be any size that you want really because this is just using leftovers all right now you can fold it over if you like or you can leave it as is I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over just like this now for this one I am gonna use some hot glue this tripod sucks I need trying out a tabletop tripod to see if it gets you guys closer without me having to work around the one in between my legs all the time. And I'm not liking it, so I might have to go back to the other one. All right, so just hot glue this in place. All right, 
Now, I'm going to bend this in half, and then it's going to fold less than half. Just because I don't really like how it's fraying on me. But you don't have to do that part if you don't want to. All right. So now what you want to do is make sure you have it even at the bottom the best that you can. And you want to fold your fabric in thirds. Now, if you want to have the appearance of an angle, then you would tuck one corner in when you're folding it. Once you think it looks good, open it back up, put some glue on there to hold it in place. Add some more glue, fold it again, make sure your top is meeting. Now, if you can't get it to here, you can always use a clamp like this to get that to hold in place. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my label. I've got some hot glue here. And I'm going to make sure I've got it facing upward. Put the scan part on the front, the little barcode. And then you're going to wrap it around. Once you get it around, cut that excess off. Add a little more glue and wrap that side around and then cut the excess off. Now what I like to do is I like to go back over it just a teeny bit at the edge with just a little bit of hot glue because for some reason um, when you don't use the tacky glue on this it wants to peel. So I just put a little bit of hot glue on there and then you can make it smooth by just putting your scissors on there like that because it'll cool it down real quick and gives you a flat surface and you don't even see it. Okay, And then there you have a thick fabric swatch which is almost like this one. This one I did a little bit more folding because I had a bigger piece of material but you use what you have so you don't waste it. And then now you have two cute little polka dot fabric swatches with pieces that you would have thrown away. You can't use them for pretty much anything else. They're too tiny. I mean, what would you really use that for? Not too many things. So there's that. Now, you can also do a rolled bolt, which I didn't tell you that in the beginning. Um, and that's pretty easy too. If you don't have enough fabric... You can take a coffee stirring stick, a little wooden dowel, a toothpick, anything like that, and you can cut it to the size that you want your bolt to be, which we're going to say ours are going to be about an inch, which is about a foot. So we're going to cut it down to make it the size we want. All right, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue just on the edge of this. And I don't want it to be at the very, very bottom. Sorry about that. I don't want it to be at the very, very bottom. I want to have some hanging over. And then right here is the top, so I'm going to go just a tiny bit taller than the top. Put a little bit of glue right there in the middle. 
you don't need to go to the edges. And then there you have a rolled bolt. Okay, now let's label it. Put a little bit of glue. Put our label on it. And then there you have yourself a fabric bolt that's like in a rolled little swatch. You can trim off your phrase and do what we did with the Aileen glue if you like. But that's just with the little extra piece of fabric that's left over. It's not quite an inch wide by about three inches long. So, you know, you can kind of utilize your scraps this way. Everybody's got scraps. All right, so here's a piece that I had that was scrap that I didn't use with the wooden dab, okay, or toothpick or coffee stirring stick, whatever you're using that's round. Bamboo stick even works too. And I want you to see the difference in how neat these look compared to how messy this is. Just doesn't quite do the same. I think the ones with the wooden dowel inside of it is a lot neater looking. So for me, I like this way better. All right, and there you have it. All right, so one more bonus thing you can do as well that I just thought of after camera um, is take your coffee stir and stick make a hanging swatch and what I did is I took the round top part and I just drilled two holes in it one small one at first and then I went back with a bigger drill bit and did a bigger one and the smaller one is because this will split really easy and I'm just using some drill bits that I got from the uh, Harbor Freight so I used this teeny one over here which was the biggest one in the pack and they go all the way down to ones that are smaller than a stick pen. And then afterwards, I drilled it with this one, which is, um, I'm not sure what size it is, but it's probably like a 16th or so. I have the drill bits that I use mostly out, so they're not labeled with sizes. And then you could just kind of hang it up on a hook in your sewing shop if you like. But that's it. All right, thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day. I will see you next time.